Are you concerned about all this corruption being misgendered as conspiracies? Well, don't you worry. Sit back, relax, and join in the conversation as we talk with today's guest. Welcome to another LSB Film Productions podcast with your host, Chris Brooks. Hello, and today I'm joined with the wonderful Nicholas Martin. Sorry, while I just adjust my um, headphones. Nicholas is massively contributing towards trying to change the way our telecom systems are being handled with 5G, which, as we all know, or those who follow my channel know, isn't a good thing. So I'll just, just for a bit of background clarity for um, my audience, this is our third time trying to record this podcast. So if either of us look a little bit glazed, it's because it's now our third time. So I'm going to hand you straight over to Nicholas. Um, the floor is all yours. <laughs> very good, very good. Thanks so much. Third time lucky, as they say. Let's and hope I'm, so. I'm always optimistic. Um, many, many thanks, Chris. Um, just for a bit of background, I had a career in business and I ran a small company for many, many years, still running another company, but not so um, involved day to day. And my wife put in... Uh, Wi-Fi many, many years ago, maybe 10 years ago. And she got um, pins and needles in her arms and legs and went to see the doctor. The doctor said, don't worry about it. And then years and years and years later, she couldn't get out of bed at one o'clock in the morning. And I had to take her to a hospital and she was completely paralyzed, immobile. And she had to have morphine to injections to dull the pain and cortisone to try and get her mobile again. And she was then in a wheelchair. I did a great deal of research because I didn't fancy pushing my uh, dear wife around in a wheelchair until either she dropped dead or I dropped dead. And I discovered Martin Paul, professor emeritus at Washington State University, and a huge amount of other information that Wi-Fi, which is part of the microwave in air spectrum, um, of 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz, um, it does something quite extraordinary. The cells of the body have these low voltage gated calcium channels, which open and close and let a certain amount of calcium from the bloodstream in calcium ions from the bloodstream into the cell. And Wi-Fi can open these channels too much. You get too many calcium ions in the cell and that causes peroxynitrites, which then cause inflammation going around the bloodstream. Now, I have to thank Professor Martin Paul for being so intelligent to explain that to the world. And we got rid of Wi-Fi and my wife is on holiday in China. And I just came back from five weeks with her in Penang, which is a little island off Malaysia. And she's not- Sounds very nice. Yeah. I've come back to a very cold England. And... <laughs> my heart bleeds. <laughs> <laughs> and so that shocked me. And then I thought, bloody hell, Nicholas Martin, what are you going to do with the rest of your life? you've been shown something and you can tell people about it so they're not affected and you ought to do that. And so I made arrangements for a, an American company to take the sales base of our company over and that left me much more time to do what I do now, which is try and get the truth out to the public. Now, what, what is interesting is that when I first started all this five years ago, you know, and trying to do, get more and more, and there are many other people much more intelligent than I'm doing the same sort of thing, it's not just me, of course, um, is that the, years ago, people thought I was right around the bend. Now, they don't think that I'm right around the bend. More and more people are beginning to realize, and it's thanks to people like Robert Kennedy in America, he had the guts to bring a court case with his excellent lawyer, Scott McCullough, against the American government, and he won the case. Now, what was the case all about? The case was about the fact that the damage of mobile phones, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, smart meters, which is all microwave in-air radiation. In other words, the data for the pictures in your emails goes through the waveform in a certain frequency for the microwave frequency. Mm -hmm. Now, the the thing is, the government, and I've got letters from the government, dear Mr. Martin, I'm the minister of this, that, and the other, and don't worry your little head, 
Because ICNA, which is the International Commission of Non-Ionizing Radiation Protection, says everything is perfectly safe. Now, I remember our dear government 50 years ago encouraged people, 60 years ago, encouraged doctors to walk around in hospital having cigarettes. And there are films where the doctors would say, Mrs. Jones, you're going to have an operation. I have a fag. I know you're in bed at the moment. I have a fag. It'll be very good for you before you have your operation. That was exactly, the government. Yeah. <laughs> that was the government 50, 60 years ago, 70 years ago. Now, the government wouldn't dare do that. And it's the same, it's going to be the same with this technology. I'm not against technology. I'm absolutely for it. And we're talking on technology at the moment, but I'm talking on a wired system. There's no Wi Fi in this house, but the reception is perfectly okay. In fact, the data download speeds are faster in wired uh, systems than they are in wireless systems. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Wired is much, much more stable than any kind of, whether it's headphones, whether it's computers, whether it's signals for your phone. Why is the way to go? Absolutely, absolutely. And um, th uh, it's very important in my environment because before this technology, this wire ubiquitous wireless technology, um, and we're talking about microwave wireless, not, you know, FM or AM radio, it's the microwave wireless technology, which is so very bad for the human system. Before this technology in the 1930s, I remember looking up the website, one in 17 people in the UK got cancer. Now it's one in two. And if you stick a mouse in a Wi-Fi field or microwave field, not in the oven, but in the field, you know, that we're talking about, mm. it'll get cancer, it'll get diabetes. And a mouse can't be a conspiracy theorist, at least as far as I know, it can't be a conspiracy <laughs> theorist. So... Yeah. We have to get this truth so that people don't die of cancer, people don't get sick. And we have the urgent need to get this information out to people because the British government and governments throughout the world stick to this narrative that everything is perfectly safe because you don't heat up much, but it's not really heating that will damage you, it's the non-heating effects. And governments are notoriously unreliable. And we saw that in the pandemic when they said to Chris, you mustn't go out, you mustn't do this uh, during the pandemic. Yet they apparently were holding parties in 10 Downing Street. And that shows you governments. And yeah, just the two tier system. Exactly. Do as we say, not as, uh, not as we do. And I'll Correct. give you an even more cataclysmic example of government narratives and it was very shocking for me because i was very fond of my grandfather who was uh, in austria just before hitler and he saw hitler rising and thought that you know it's not a very good bloke this chap hitler so he contacted a man called lord portal in britain who was chairman of wigan steve a paper company and my grandfather said i think this bloke hitler is dangerous if it gets bad could you give me a job and Lord Portal said, yes. Lord Portal said, we don't know what you're talking about. Never heard of this Hitler vote because it was a long time before the war. But he said, of course, you can have a job. So the paper mill workers tipped off my grandfather and said they had heard the Gestapo are going to arrest him the next day. So he got on the train into Germany and from Germany to Holland and Holland to the UK and Nazi permits to travel. And in the UK, he joined British military intelligence with his cousin, who was already in British military intelligence, and his cousin's name was Sir Lewis Namier. Both those two men worked their backsides off in the British war effort in British military intelligence against Hitler. They both died, not knowing, which I discovered only a couple of years ago, by a casual search on the internet, that Britain and America were financing Hitler. Now, if you look yeah. it up, anybody can Google it. They'll discover that Prescott Bush, George Bush's granddad, was running a bank called the Union Bank of America, I think it was called, and they were selling gold and giving it to the Nazis, to the architects of Nazism. And in Britain, you had Montague Norman, chairman of the Bank of England, governor of the Bank of England, doing a similar thing. Now, that really shook me up to think that my grandfather, who I was very, very fond of, thought he was doing a great job for the world, you know, not knowing what I discovered, you know, many, many years later, just by a casual search on the internet. That shows you governments are not reliable for telling people the truth. And well, it, shows you, it shows you that the governments aren't really there 
for your well-being. Uh, the, the word government itself, govern, and isn't meant something like Latin or whatnot for mind. So it's literally govern the mind, government. Mm. Yes, yeah. Well, I heard something even more remarkable. Um, in my uh, five weeks in Penang, um, I visited a good friends of ours who have a flat out in Penang. And he's actually a Swiss man and he's uh, French Swiss. And he said the word parliament um, comes from the French word. I don't know whether it's true, but it was interesting what he said. He said from parler, which is to speak. Yeah. And meant comes from montier, which means to lie. So he said parliament is a speak lie machine. <laughs> I that that kind of makes sense because I've heard similar with um, academia. Yes. Basically means you learn sod all. Yes. Well, yes that, that, you learn sod all. That's kind of what academia means. Oh, is it? I didn't know that yeah. bit. Mm. But either way, I became a local councillor to support the British tradition of truth, fair play, justice and democracy. And I think most people are decent. You know, of course, there are a few rogues, but most English people are very decent. And if you fell down in the street, they rush to help you. They don't want their pets to be banished. Most English British people are very kind hearted. That's my experience of British people. And most people can't conceive of the tricks the governments get up to. And I certainly couldn't conceive of what, uh, what I discovered in relation to Hitler and the financing of Hitler. And so if more people um, do what we're doing, which is to be honest, to care about people and to try and tell the truth, then the whole nature of our society would change. And if you think of Prince Andrew, no... I'd rather not. <laughs> No parliamentary bill has been passed in the House of Commons, or maybe it has to go in the House of Lords, I don't know, or both, to get rid of his title. You know, he's got a dukedom. Apparently, to strip him of the council, it has to be a parliamentary action. But it doesn't matter. It's completely irrelevant. Miss, Mr. Andrew, as we might call him now, is finished as a, an active prince in the royal family because of public awareness. And it's exactly the same with the malicious technology, which is 5G. We have to tell the truth about it, just like Robert Kennedy did with his lawyer to the American government. Now, it's not that I'm against technology. As I said, I'm absolutely in favor of the technology, but the technology- is how must, it's used. Exactly, how it's used and it mustn't arm people. And I do what I do because not because I'm a saint, on the contrary, just have a word with my wife and she'll tell you I'm not. <laughs> I, I care about people. I don't want to see my neighbour getting cancer. I don't want to see it, Mrs Jones, 32, in case you're having, you, having diabetes for the rest of her life. I don't want to see her children getting ADHD. And if I can refer specifically to what's going on in Wokingham as we speak, what has happened is that if you want to put up a 5G mast outside your house and you're a telecom company, you have to apply to the planning commission and you have to issue a certificate that the mast is safe. In other words, it complies with their guidance, the ICNA guidance. And we discovered that this mast in Rance's Lane, which is a road in working, has been applied for on the basis of a certificate to guarantee public health from a company that doesn't exist. The certificate was issued in the name of the Three UK Limited. You have to be very precise and look up Three UK Limited, and you discover from Company House website, the government website, it was dissolved in 27th of October 2015. Now, that certificate from a company that doesn't exist was issued to guarantee public health that it complies with their guidelines as a safeguard for public health, and it was issued from a company that doesn't exist. That's point number one. Point number two. If you want to stick up this mask, you're supposed to be on the Ofcom register of persons with approved powers under the Electronic Communications Code. That's Ofcom is the government agency that regulates this field of microwave radiation telecommunications. And at the time of the application of the Rancis Lane mast, I couldn't see that the applicant was on the Ofcom register of approved suppliers. Strangely enough, it appeared months later, apparently, according to one of my colleagues. Now, that's happened in Wokingham. 
Now, imagine if you wanted to build a big extension in your house, you would have to get a building control certificate, say everything is okay and everything is perfectly fine. If you got a certificate from a company that doesn't exist... Where did that that's... certificate come from if the company doesn't exist? Yeah, where, well, what... where was that printer located? Yeah, well, what, that's an extremely point. What happens is you have a form, which they say is the ICNAP certificate, and the issuing name of the company was put as 3UK Limited by the company making the application. And it was tantamount, and the equivalent would be if you built this extension, you had a building control certificate in the name of an organization approving it from doesn't exist and submit it to the council. Now, the council would say, might say, well, when we received your certificate, we thought it was genuine. But if you then discovered, or your neighbors discovered that the, the certificate is bogus and the council didn't do anything and take your extension down, that would be a very strange thing in society. And it means that I could pay my council. Well, it's, it's complicit, it's being complicit with fraud. Exactly. I mean, that's it, the view. That's, um, that's the view of a retired police inspector who I consulted. He said there's an act called the Forgery and Counterfeiting Act, 1981, and the issuance of a certificate in the name of a company that doesn't exist would be considered as the use of a false instrument under that act. Now, in addition, we one of my colleagues contacted a uh, company's house and asked them their opinion of the use of a document in the name of a company that doesn't exist, this is a dissolved company. They said allegedly that it would be considered fraudulent. And so that backs up the approach of the retired inspector, police inspector, who mm. said this is the use of a false instrument under the force. Well, it has to be. I can't I honestly can't see how you would be able to argue to the contrary. Yes. I mean, I would agree with you. And that's why I wrote several letters to the council before I went to Penang in Malaysia um, and said that I pointed all this out. Now, the masked cabinets went up before I went away and I had assumed since I'd written all this to the council that they decided to stop progress on it. And I, as other councils seem to have done once they've become aware mm. of this. I, don't, I know Thetford, we, we, in the planning committee, we stopped a 5G mast being constructed because that was close to a school and they did actually say, in, the, in fairness, they did use the potential dangers to human health that was a factor in it because normally it's just down to it's a place of natural beauty and they, they're they hideous and it's usually those kind of reasons why these masks don't get allowed mm. but in our particular case the health was a was mentioned so yeah. i was actually quite shocked by that it was so that, that's one good thing for thetford but sorry yeah. carry on as you were yeah it's very very encouraging um well done thetford that's excellent um but Wokingham have an entirely different view. Um, they, um, and when I came back from holiday, uh, I saw they closed the road. And so I wrote to the council saying, are you putting the mast up? And I then realized, because the next day the mast appeared. So I wrote to the council again and pointed out that the planning permission had seemed to have been granted on this certificate from a company that doesn't exist. The applicant was not on the register. and. In the view of companies housed and a retired police inspector, this doesn't seem to be regular. And I also referred it to the Police and Crimes Commissioner under the Forgery and Counterfeiting Act. They didn't seem to want to act. They referred me to action fraud and to Ofcom. Ofcom said they're not interested in uh, policing the register. They don't police the register. Um, action fraud said we deal mostly with credit card fraud. So I wrote to the chief in... Uh, to the chief constable of Thames Valley, where Wokingham is, and I'm still trying to ask him whether he's prepared to investigate this under the Forgery and Counterfeiting Act 1981. Now, if he doesn't, my next step is to see whether the IOPC, which investigates police activity, will can look into why the chief, uh, chief constable of Thames Valley has not investigated this particular case. But that's I mean, to me and to you, it's astonishing that this is going on in local government. I mean, it, to me, it is quite remarkable. 
Wasn't, so, wasn't it George? Sorry, wasn't it George Orwell in his book of um, 1984, where he kind of said that by towards the end there'll be so much corruption within politics that it will just be taken as second nature. It just becomes so normalised this corruption that it just gets overlooked because people are just well, they've become so used to the corruption that. It's not so much that they they don't see it as corruption anymore, but they're just numb to it. Mm, I didn't know all well and said that. I, I, I wasn't aware of that. Um, but what I do feel is that if we can get over to the public what's going on in in their governmental bodies, then the the awareness of people will have the same effect as on Prince Andrew. It cleans up the royal family. I mean, mm. Prince, it may, I don't know what's going to happen, but Prince Andrew is not going around working them anymore and opening up Tesco's, Waitrose or Sainsbury's anymore. He is absolutely finished. Because absolutely. people are, And that's what we need to do. We need to get the truth out about this technology and how it damages people. And so that the council can't do things like this. You know, they... Uh, in addition to pointing out the use of this certificate from a company that doesn't exist, I pointed out a number of other important things, which is under their own guidelines, you know, these heating guidelines called ICNA, which seem to say that don't worry about the non-thermal effects much, is the heating effects. Whereas in reality, it's the non-heating effects that cause cancer and all these other things, which the government locally and nationally deny. They say everything is perfectly safe, just rely on ICNA. Well, we find that the, the local government like working are not following their own guidance in the sense that if you've got a pacemaker or a metal object in your body, maybe like a filling or some other metal device implanted in you, then ICNA doesn't cover you. You know, their guidance doesn't cover you. It emits it. So, would, that include, um, would that include things like hip replacements and like surgical yeah. steel and all those kinds of things? Absolutely, because if you imagine you've got a, a large amount of metal in your body and you're faced with an electromagnetic field, the radiation effects are going to be multiplied up in your body by those metal objects. Mm. And in relation to a base maker, it is conceivable that it interrupts the um, the electromagnetic system of the base maker, and you could be left with a heart attack. I mean, that's conceivable, which is why uh, ICNOPs say they don't cover such people. It's, you know, they exclude them from their guidance. Now, if these people are excluded, they should be catered for by the local authority, should be protected, as is implied by the ICNA guidance which the local authority is following. Now, I sent also to this Wokingham Borough Council a document from Nokia, which says a 5G mast can cover 100 square miles. That would probably include, you know, a whole lot of Wokingham Borough Council's area, so they should have written to the, everybody in the area and said, do you have a base maker, a metal applet, or any metal devices in your body? Because we need to safeguard you. And as far as I can see, they haven't done it. No. And what's, what's well, more, let's face it, they haven't even safeguarded the safety of 5G in itself, let alone no. anything else. Yeah, yeah. But you see, because government is so compartmentalised, you know, that uh, the planner says, we just have to follow the NPF, NPPF. If the NPPF says dance on Tuesday, we'll dance on Tuesday. They don't say uh, if you dance on a spot on the ground and there's a, it's ice and the ice breaks, they don't worry about that. They just worry about dancing mm. because the NPF says them to dance. But, it's following orders, sir. Exactly, yes. Yeah. And that's no excuse under the Nuremberg Code. You know, that no. under the Nuremberg Code, you have to, you can't just follow orders. You have, if the orders are morally wrong, and you follow those morally wrong orders, you are liable, not the person who issues the orders. Absolutely. So in relation to Wokingham Borough Council, they haven't canvassed their population to find out if there are any people with these implants or pacemakers. And they've allowed a mast to be erected on the basis of a certificate from a company that doesn't exist, you know, the, to guarantee public health. So an individual might say to the council, I'm suffering, my pacemaker has switched off and I have suffered a problem. I'm going to sue you, Wokingham Borough Council, because you didn't write to me 
and protect me, uh, as the, as the uh, Ibn guidance say you should do, and what is the council going to do? Because we're our House MP, he said this technology is uninsurable. She wrote to the relevant minister in government and said, Lloyds of London won't insure it, Swiss Re won't insure it. How is the council going to honour a claim if the claim was successful? And most councils are in very dicey positions financially at the moment. Absolutely. Not, yeah. So I pointed all this out to the council. And I also included two other very, very important documents. Um, I don't know whether people are aware of the difference between 5G and 4G about the actual science of it. Maybe I should quickly outline that. Um, yeah, I know they work on completely different wave frequency, diff completely different um, how far they can spread. So, yeah, it's more 5G is more of a sonar type where it sends out your signals opposed to 4G, which... Go on, you explain it. Um... Yeah. Um, basically, what is necessary to understand is that when you receive an email through your Wi-Fi, for example, the information for the pixels and the shape of the picture is contained in the waveform in the microwave spectrum. It's a certain frequency range called the microwave spectrum. Now, Wi-Fi, smart meters, mobile phones, all 2G, 3G, 4G, is all called isotropic radiation. In other words, if you drop a bevel in a still pond, you'll get these rings, and they, they weaken the further away they are from the stone that you drop in. In other words, the further away from the source of the radiation, the safer you are. That's 2G, 3G, 4G, and the rest. 5G is not that at all. It's a different technology. It's a beam of energy. And those beams can go for miles and miles and miles. And the idea that these beams of 5G energy can't go very far is absolute nonsense because 5G originated on the battlefield. And that's as the, the governments run the armed forces and they know that battlefield 5G weapons go for miles. And the way that 5G works is that it scans the field for emitting devices and then locked onto a target. And then the 5G weapon fires a beam of energy at that target to get it blown out of the battlefield. And it would be done on AI computer. In other words, you've got a frequency emitted by the enemy's device scanned by the 5G scanning beam back onto an AI computer, which would then fire a signal. So to destroy the enemy. So it's a battlefield technology originally, which was then transferred to peaceful telecommunications. And the idea that it doesn't go very far, can't go through walls is absolute nonsense because it wouldn't work as a battlefield weapon. Certain mm. frequencies in the beam forming 5G range might not go very far, like 60 gigahertz or 100 gigahertz, they might not go very far, but the sweet spot as it's called for 5G weapons is sub gigahertz, as not gigahertz, and low gigahertz, up to 10 gigahertz. And those beams can go straight through buildings, straight miles and miles and miles. And it's more what, like a laser. Exactly, a laser in the microwave spectrum. Right. And that's the difference. And the um, it, it doesn't obey what's called the inverse square law. And it, that means the further you're away from the source, from 2G, 3G, 4G, the safer you are, that doesn't apply to 5G. And it's why Nokia are right when they say that a 5G mask can cover 100 square miles. So mm. if it were a 4G mask, the further you're away, the safer you are. But it doesn't apply to a 5G mask because it's non-isotropic. It's different technology. And so I wrote uh, to Wakingham Borough Council pointing out all these things. I said that a certificate was the name of a company that doesn't exist. The company doesn't seem to have been on the Ofcom register. The company itself said that it would not uh, alleged uh, that it might be fraud to use the name of a company which doesn't exist. I pointed all this out to them. I also sent to them, have you asked all the people in your area whether they have any metal devices and so forth? I pointed out the non-insurability, according to where a Hobhouse MP of this technology. And if somebody sues the council, who is going to honor the claim? And it is interesting that in America, Verizon are 
putting aside in their company accounts provision for being sued. They actually openly declared it according to the HD Trust in America. And Verizon have offices down the road from working in Reading. So it's not as if it was technology that applies only in America. This technology is international. Oh, I think it's worldwide. Absolutely, yeah. Then I wrote to them to say that there is a man called Professor Klaus Buchner who is a member of the European Parliament, who has pointed out that this technology can cause ADHD and autism, both of which are going through the roof, as is diabetes. And that's also known to be caused because we've known that there are institutes who put rats under this sort of technology fields and they get diabetes and they die of cancer. And the Ramazzini Institute, a cancer institute, did such research and published it. Mm. And... What is even more interesting is that Professor Klaus Buchner has said that there's a compound in the body called phenylethylamine, which enables the brain to concentrate, and that this technology, microwave brain air radiation, depletes PEA, phenylethylamine, from the body, and it leaves people without the ability to concentrate, which is what ADHD and ultimately autism is all about. And when I was at school uh, many, many, many years ago, um, I'd never heard of anybody getting autism. There was, I knew of no child in either my primary or secondary school, or even in university, who was autistic. And Certainly nobody had ADHD, but now those things are going through the roof. And Klaus Buchner has pointed out that the depletion of BEA is caused by this technology. And what has working in our council done? Put this Mars up very next to a school. And I also... Why do they always seem to choose schools? Because that's not just Wokingham. That seems to be a, a very similar theme where these 5G masks are always placed by a school. Well, it's extremely interesting because we're making more and more people aware of the dangers. And it's interesting to note that a group got together in Brighton and brought a, a judicial review against Brighton and Hose City Council. And the result was the, the, the council backed down, caved in, and eventually agreed to take the mask down. And they took down the mask because there was a consent order issued by a judge, stamped by a judge, and it had three items on the consent order. And the second one, the council failed to address the health address the health effects of this particular proposal and to obtain adequate evidence of the assessment of the proximity to the school and the amended proposal. Now, they then had to take the mask down. Now, I sent this to Wokingham Borough Council, and I've also sent them the data, the paper from Dr. Klaus, uh, Professor Klaus Buchner about ADHD and autism. And mm -hmm. Wokingham is now constructing, or is going to construct, I think, three new SEN schools, special educational need disability schools. And a large element of that will be people with children with ADHD and autism. And Klaus Buchner is saying this 5G Mars type technology causes autism and ADHD. So I've sent this to the council and I said, it's not up to me to point out the health effects. This is your Department of Health. They should be uncovering this information to protect the people of Wokingham, including myself. After all, yeah. not yet, these masks go these 5G masks, which are beams of energy, go for hundreds of square miles. And it's very important that all of this comes out to the public because it's only by the public awareness, putting aware, that awareness onto the council that will reform the council. And then you can't do these things. Like, And what I would say, is that 2G, 3G, 4G is a technology and people can be taught how to use it safely. Like don't stick your mobile against your head because they're, the frequencies are known to cause, you know, the radiation is known to cause cancer. Put it on speakerphone. Don't keep it on yeah. your body. That's you can just feel from the heat of it alone when it's by your head that it's not good. 
Absolutely. And I used to use my phone uh, next to my head in my bed years ago before I discovered it as an alarm clock. I had no idea that the radiation could cause cancer and the Ramazzini Institute showing it does cause cancer in rats. I was completely oblivious because the government says everything is perfectly safe, Nicholas. Don't worry your little head. Well, how does that I'm, work if how does that work if you've got uh, on plane mode? Well, like I'll sometimes take my phone up to bed, but I'll have it on plane mode, so there's well, no Wi-Fi. That's you see, that's an extremely question. I've changed my view on plane mode. I used to believe that when you switch it onto airplane mode, that it cuts out the radiation. Now, funny enough, I was with my wife in the car. She put her phone on airplane mode. But she was still picking up the Waze function. And the woman in Waze, you know, she says, turn left, turn right, go straight on, was still speaking when she was on aeroplane mode. So it doesn't that isn't that that's I don't know, isn't that down to location? Well and Bluetooth. It, I don't uh, know. Well, we, we don't hmm. have we have we don't have Bluetooth function in the car. Oh, and okay. so the, it must be being transmitted by some form of radiation. So my advice is that if you want to use your phone as an alarm clock, put it on airplane mode, as you say, and stick it in another room. But best is to get an alarm clock and switch off your phone. That's what yeah. I do. And, yes, definitely. Um, See, I'm quite bad. I'm not so much now, but you know, I'd love to listen to whether it's hypnotherapy or various different frequencies when I'm laying in bed, or even sometimes there's a brown noise and rain. But obviously, the Bluetooth. It's frying your brains, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, Bluetooth is a form of Wi-Fi. And Wi-Fi, as I say, you know, they put a, a, other people have put a mouse in a Wi-Fi field. Ramazzini Institute, which is a cancer institute, use sprawly um, rats, something like that, special type of rat. Another group put a mouse in a microwave field and it had pancreatic problems and got diabetes. And the incidence of diabetes going through the roof. How many people are on diabetes medi medications and are having to inject themselves? Exactly. And we know one in, sorry. I just agree with you, yeah. Yeah. And one in two people getting cancer. And we know from the Ramazzini Institute this technology causes cancer. But we need technology. We're not saying, I mean, I would never say get rid of mobile phones. People need mobile phones, you mm. know, and they're very, very useful. But we should be. Explained how to use them so they don't hurt. Us. Educated on how to use them, absolutely. I completely agree with you. And 5G is an entirely different thing. It's not a necessary technology. It's okay on the battlefield if you want to kill people, but it's not a suitable technology for peaceable society. And we just don't need it. You can get right. sufficient download speeds with 4G equipment. Now, our task is to educate boroughs like Woking and Borough Council and say, these are facts. You've got like Professor Bookner, you've got Professor um, Martin Paul, Professor Emeritus from Washington State University, which says he's got 20,000 peer reviewed papers showing the bad effects of this technology. And it's not good enough for Woking and Borough Council to say, the government says everything is perfectly safe and we needn't worry. And we can accept a certificate from a company that doesn't exist. We can accept an application from a company not on the Ofcom register. We can do all these things. And we're not going to take a blind bit of notice here, Mr. Martin. Please go away. No, no it's that, terrible. That it's is terrible. what's going on. I mean, it's not acceptable in a 20th, 21st century Western democracy, at least a, a society that believes it's a democracy. Absolutely. And the way, the way to change it is to get these facts about what is the nature of 5G technology out into the public, and the public will demand that this doesn't occur anymore. This sort of thing. Oh, sorry. Well, so, I think that is a great place to end it on. We're in our last minute. That's gone quite quickly, hasn't it? Um, thank you very much. That's been very informative. I think my guests will find that very informative, and I would love to have you back on at some point to talk about... Um, the updates of this and also the other things that we were talking about. But for now, thank you very much. It's been very enjoyable and yeah, thank you very much. And thank you, Chris. Nice Thanks. one. That's brilliant. Thank you.